Hello friends, hope you are well. Welcome to another episode of The Dirt Report. It has been a pretty quiet week, unfortunately. Nonetheless, I'm sure we can dig up some news topics uh, about our favorite Australian internet and maybe some other tech news. And I know, as always, I've promised a quick one, but this time around, I believe it will be very, very quick. We have three good topics which we were going to discuss. Hey, Pat, hey, hang on. Yeah, no, you've done it again. It's gonna be a long video. Yeah, sorry, mate. I know. I know. Anyway. Okay, thanks. Uh, and a quick reminder, if you like this sort of content, then please make sure to subscribe. And if you like this particular video, then make sure to hit that like button when you are satisfied. And only then, or when I remember to remind you again at the end of the video. Let's get started with our first topic. And it's a tech one. Though if you want to just skip to the NBN topic, then go right ahead. It's the next one across, maybe two, three minutes, hopefully. You may remember that a little while back, there used to be a browser called Internet Explorer. Now, I don't blame you if you don't remember, it's been a while, but every time you wanted to search something, you could never really find it. And every time you wanted to open a web page, it looked kind of disturbed and not quite right. But because there was nothing else to use, you used it, but you know, good things never, never last. And so came Google Chrome, based on Google's Chromium development package. And soon Microsoft needed something to compete with Google Chrome and they created something new. They came out with Microsoft Edge. It was gonna be the be end all da 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 da, they advertised it and it all failed. It was still based on their old Internet Explorer code, but with a fancy new look. They stripped away a lot of the fat. Sure, it was a little bit faster and had a few more features, but nobody wanted to change from Chrome to Edge. But you know what they say, if you can't beat them, join them. Microsoft made the decision to develop the next version of Microsoft Web Browser Edge on Chromium. What does it mean? Well, back in the old Edge, you had very little choice on web browser extensions because the most popular browser had the most browser extensions. Therefore, Google Chrome, based on the Chromium development kit, had every single extension imaginable and not many developers wanted to waste their time developing for Microsoft Edge. So with Microsoft's new Edge browser based on Chromium, you now get access to every single extension on Chrome. All of a sudden, Microsoft and Chrome are competing at the same level. Even though it's still Google's code in the back, Microsoft Edge 2020, I'm gonna call it, is that it's kind of nice, maybe a bit of reskin on top of Chromium with the features of the previous Edge that made it quite unique. So now you get the speed and reliability of Chromium with the cool features that Edge brought with it, which is taking full screenshots of web pages, being able to annotate on top of them and then you know, pass them on as images straight away from your web browser, the speed improvements, uh, and because Google Chrome is a bit of a RAM guzzler when having more than 10 tabs open, it requires a supercomputer. So, you know, that's pretty bad. A lot of people complain about Google Chrome being slow and eating a lot of RAM. Well, so far in my testing, I have found Edge to be much more efficient at maintaining multiple tabs at the same time. I like to open a lot of them. But you may ask, why would I be talking about this in the Dirt Report? What are some of the things that Microsoft Edge, based on Chromium, brings to the table that is much better than before? Well, privacy control. Specifically for the user, something that we take for granted and Google doesn't really care about. Privacy online is now a bit of a luxury for many. So having a browser that actually takes the privacy to a more transparent level when you get to control what gets tracked about you, I think is a really good thing. And I wanted to talk about it and let you guys know to give Microsoft Edge Chromium based a try. But here's the thing. There are many other browsers that have privacy enabled Features, they also block ads tracking and they do all sorts of things. So this is not the only one, but it is based on Microsoft. And the problem with that is it is the only browser that deploys in a business environment because remember Microsoft is used in a lot of business areas and IT departments deploy what comes with Windows. So if you have a chance, give it a go. Let me know what you think below and I'm gonna be using it from yesterday yesterday. Okay, let's get into NBN Co. This one bothers me a little bit and maybe because of the amount of complaints that come from people on satellite NBN. You see, satellite NBN is used mainly in rural areas to give internet connectivity to communities that are out of reach of cable or anything. Now, I have heard from a few people who are in reasonable distances from a main city and were on wireless and satellite NBN. 
and wondering what kind of speeds they should expect. That was the main question, well, what speed do I get? Now, I'm sorry, but I, I really can't tell you. But I did ask and follow up what they did get. Now, I always thought there would be, maybe at a distance of 50 to 100 kilometers from a city center, somewhere in a farm-like area just off the city bounds. But this week, NB and Co revealed, and for the first time, uh, how many services are connected to the Sky Master, but within 25 kilometers from a city center. Now before I get into the numbers, I want to mention that this has come from a freedom of information request that any citizen can submit. However, the problem is that only three so far have been successful. You guys aren't trying hard enough to make NBN Co transparent. It's up to you. <laughs> if they had their way, they would have a Gestapo-like secrecy, knocking on your door at 3 a.m. to install cable by downloading your browser history at the same time, and maybe you end up in jail. In any case, I'll discuss the transparency part in a second. But to summarize, there are 1,033 premises that are connected to the satellite NBN within 25 kilometer radius of a major city in Australia. Now, 1,033, does that sound like a lot? In my view, no. It sounds like a drop in the bucket or the ocean, you'd say. But on the other hand, it could be 1,033 properties that are out in the bush, which could benefit from having these connections, these slots, because they are limited. That's the one thing you need to know. They are limited. Because if you are 25 kilometers from a city center, I cannot understand how a premises has no access to a phone line. But this comes down to cost. If the premises has a high cost to service, ratio, they would put on the cheapest solution, which potentially is the SkyMaster Satellite NBN. There's also an eligibility scale, and there is around 4,013 premises that are elected as urban, but are eligible for Satellite NBN, and only 1,033 have taken the offer. I'm not sure if it's because of the fear of getting stuck with slow satellite internet or there is a better option that could potentially wait on because if I choose satellite, will NBN just forget about me and never put anything better in place? We don't know. I know someone who is exactly 31 kilometers from Perth Center. Um, they used to have ADSL1 and now has NBN fixed wireless. And all I have to say is that this is a minor upgrade. Without going into too much detail, nobody really cares, the internet, well, it's, it's, it's slow. It's pretty much as slow as ADSL, maybe a little bit faster, maybe a little bit more, I suppose, constant. So I wonder how good satellite would be for a property like this. And this premise is not in the bush per se, though classified as rural, but that's just council bureaucracy as there is a whole, you know, well, there's a Woolies down the road and a train station. In fact, one side of the street is urban and the other still rural. Having a phone line means you can potentially at least get fiber to node, though that too sometimes doesn't perform. Running a new set of fiber optic cables also blows the budget, so wireless it is. Also, I have discussed this with my wife and um, she has allowed me to sign up to 5G when it is available. I'll give it a go for a couple of months and get back to you guys on the, I suppose, the benefits and the difference between that and fiber to the node and which one I would choose or which one I stick around with. Um, and I'll give you folks a very good update on that, hopefully soon. So finally, transparency. Yes, I mentioned it earlier and I didn't forget. Da -da -da. NBN Co has well, they've been pretty secretive. And you know, it's business. You don't need to share everything. However, you do need at least to operate with fair intentions. And so, as you may remember last week, we talked about RSP providers suggesting NBN Co is subsidizing one NBN type for another. So the cost and income from that to try and prop this one up. See, that was just the tip of the iceberg. And hang on, can we still say icebergs? Is it, have they melted away? A topic for another day. Now, NBN is under scrutiny for using income from its normal day-to-day -day NBN services to subsidize its entry into the enterprise market, making sure to undercut other competitors. These other competitors are, of course, the ones reselling and bringing business to NBN Co. anyway. That's a bit underhanded. Even the ACCC mentioned in December last year that they would impose reporting and transparency requirements but this has yet to happen. Come on, ACCC, it's not that hard. It's a government-run thing. RSPs are not happy that NBN Co is stealing their enterprise clients on their dime and undercutting them. And to be honest, I would be pretty pissed off too. By charging people and RSPs more, NBN Co subsidizes the enterprise deals to undercut the competition, a perfect business move. But is it shady? Is it unfair? Yes, has it been proven? No, so let's just use the word allegedly. 
<sighs> Friends, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a good week coming up. Uh, I have been tiling the kitchen all weekend and that's why this video is late, so apologies for that. Uh, let me know what you guys think below about our shady NBN. And if you like this video, then tap that like button, like I said. But if you have already tapped like, then don't tap it again because it'll untap. But then maybe consider subscribing to see more content like this. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys in another one. Bye!